So Alan's getting ready to start the machining operation to hollow out the power distribution box. He's doing some last minute checks, but the interesting thing is that the first thing that the team had to do, Alan did it, was to come up with a holding system to hold this in a way that would lead it freed up to do all the side and front operations and yet keep it perfectly square. So there was a good, uh, probably, I don't know, what do you think, five hours of work figuring out and designing and putting it in. But anyway, I will uh, stop this and we'll watch it hollow this out with the shear hog. So as you can see here, and I apologize for the noise, this is the bottom of the power distribution box. Oh yeah, I saw that coaster. And they're doing the edges first, then they'll turn it over and hollow it out, and then there'll be a top made. And it'll all come together, and this is where all the go juice passes through to be distributed to all the other systems of the car. are finishing the sides now. That earlier bit you saw was going in so that the corners could be shaped right. This is the fiberglass boards that uh, will be used for the insulation layers to protect all the metal inside surfaces of the power distribution box. The guys are going to put it on the CNC machine and then mill out different shapes for the different parts. So here the guys are removing adhesive on the back and what it is is Alan and Jack have used the CNC machine to cut out these shapes which are going to be part of the insulation that lines the power distribution box. Alright, so Alan finished shaping the inside and he's already shaped the insulation boards. Will it fit? Drum roll please. My God. Look at that fit. Oh my God. That's it. You can save some money on screws. You don't even need to hold it down. You just, bam, it's done. So Alan just snapped the side pieces in that he intended to use double-sided tape and I didn't have the camera handy but it actually snapped in so hard it is literally, it, it's, it's held in place. Wow. And so that's all the red insulation. Alright, next step some screws, parts, get the thread straightened out and we're all good to go. So the Cable gland holes have been drilled, machined out, and then cleaned with a tap, and those fit perfectly. Alan started assembling the inside pieces of the insulation board, so soon you'll see components showing up. All right, so now Alan is just setting some of the parts in that are going to be ultimately secured with screws and bolts, and these are not the actual contactors. Look at that. You're like a kid putting together a model car. The guys just finished the top. So all the holes have been drilled now. It's been hollowed out and also fitted with the insulation board. And next up is an O-ring gasket so that this will be a completely watertight box. Given that this is the entire heart of all the power distribution, we are putting a lot of attention and detail into making sure that this little sucker is perfect. All right, so Alan, could you uh, walk us through all these components now that you've got them all mounted and installed? This is our power distribution box that has all the power coming out for the inverters. This is our main power coming in that goes across to a bus bar for the high voltage. Okay. Positive. Uh, there's two fuses that, f that are fused for the inverters that go straight through with a contactor, straight out, and then you have positive and negative. This is our negative bus bar. 
comes in right here and then back out for negative to the two contactors. So you have positive and negative to one contactor or one inverter and negative and positive to the other inverter. All right. And then you have the bus bar also sends power to these fuses with easily replaceable fuses. Nice. They go to these contactors, which are for the pre-charge circuit. They go to the resistors and go to here to pre-charge the inverters before the full current comes through. So the to, inverters have to be, how long does that take normally, do you know? Uh, a couple seconds. Okay, nice. And, uh, and then we have the other fuses are for our uh, AC pumps. One is to cool the batteries. We'll have a, a AC compressor and a full refrigerant system to cool the batteries. And, right. then, and then another compressor to cool the cabin. And then we have a spare one for any other high voltage that we need to take off the, the distribution box. All right, man. Well, thank you. Nice work, buddy. I appreciate it. So Alan has designed a cross member that's going to connect the PDU to both of the inverters. And all we had is some three-quarter aluminum. He's got to thin it down to half inch first. And then he's going to cut it out. So Alan took a break here and stopped for a second. He's going to change tools and secure the plate down. So as you can see here, he's thinned down this three-quarter inch plate in the areas that he's going to now cut out the brace that's going to go from the PDU here to the two inverters, one on each side. It's going to look really, really cool. So you can see it's taking shape. Unfortunately, uh, this machine has very finicky settings and to get to the very far corner here the machine over traveled slightly which means that I've got to manually pull the table back and then re-reference it so Alan has decided he's going to call it a night given that it is uh, one o'clock and as you can see it's starting to take shape so the guys are getting close to finishing it up here. They're just now working on these grooves that are going to have the wires. So the wires are going to come out of the PDU, go in and under this brace, which is mounted to the inverters. It's looking pretty nice. So the guys here are test fitting this new mounting system that's going to connect the PDU box to the inverters before they make the final rear mount. So right now it's just sitting on top of a brace, an uh, old pretzel bottle. And uh, as you can see, it's gonna look really nice. And then you'll have your wire routings that, that flow in these directions, but there's no point in cutting up wire just yet. So the next step is to make the rear mounting plate that'll actually attach it to the firewall. It looks pretty damn nice. And as you can imagine, this is gonna have a beautiful underhood display so the pink box will be replaced with the uh, front battery module that's also color coordinated to match the fenders of the car gentlemen I have to say that's outstanding work I'm a little jealous